men and good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you this first Sunday of 2021. First of all, let me just say along with you and with all who are online and all of who are on Zoom, uh, we made it. We give God thanks and praise. We give him honor and glory for this marvelous day that he has made in coming since creation and just now got here. Uh, we thank the Lord for blessing us with this blessed opportunity uh, to be together in worship one more time. And we thank God for bringing us through the year 2020. And oh, what a year it was. It's been a year filled with challenge and strife and death and a host of other things. We thought we had a grip on what 2020 would be. Many prophesied early on about how it would be a year of uh, vision, how it would be a year of seeing things. And surely we have had tremendous revelation, but it is not exactly what we expected. But we're thankful that the Lord kept us through it all, uh, through all the challenges, through all the strife, through all the concerns, uh, through the pandemic, uh, through an election, through police brutality, through protest, uh, through it all, the Lord has kept us. And we have come this morning to say thank you to him, uh, to give him praise, to give him honor, and to give him glory for this marvelous day that he has made. And now we are calling us all together into worship. Uh, the blessed worship right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We are thankful that the Lord has blessed us and has kept us and has allowed us to make it this far and we now were calling into worship now was the time uh, where we come into worship uh, we seek to set aside the things of the world not like ostriches we're not putting our heads in the ground but we are focusing now on the source of our salvation uh, the source of our power uh, the source of our peace uh, the source of our joy uh, jesus is indeed the reason for the season uh, we have celebrated his birth, we will celebrate his life, his ministry, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, and his return. Come let us gather together, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Come let us gather together now from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Jew, Gentile, black, white, male, female, young, old, we have come into this place to gather in his name and to worship our Lord and Savior. Jesus the Christ. Uh, this morning we will open uh, with a scripture from Psalm 147, 12 through 20. Amen, amen. Extol the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, Zion. He strengthens the bars of your gates and blesses your people within you. He grants peace to your borders and satisfies you with the finest of wheat. He sends his commands to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He spreads the snow like wool and scatters the frost like ashes. He hurls down his pail like pebbles. Who can withstand his icy blast? He sends his words and melts them. He stirs up his breezes and the waters flow. He has revealed his word to Jacob his laws and his decrees to Israel. He has done this for no other nation. They do not know his laws. Join me in saying this morning, praise ye the Lord. Amen. And now let us pray. Dear Lord, we come before you this morning as humbly as we know how, inviting you into our time of worship this morning. We're giving you thanks and praise and honor and glory for this day. For it is indeed the day that you have made and we rejoice and we are glad in it. Lord, we thank and praise you that we have made it into 2021 and we invite you into our fellowship this morning. God of glory, your splendor shines from a manger in Bethlehem where the light of the world is humbly born into the darkness of human night. Open our eyes to Christ's presence in the shadows of our world. 
so that we, like him, may become beacons of your justice and defenders of all for whom there is no room. We lift this prayer to you now in the mighty and magnificent name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we say again and again, amen, amen, and amen. We will now have our worship litany by Minister Byron Johnson. Good morning, Progressive. God bless you on this first Sunday of the year 2021. As Pastor has said, we are glad we made it on the other side and God has kept us through this past year. So let us worship together as we keep our minds on these words uh, on our worship litany. Faithful God, we look back on the year behind us and appreciate your presence with us through it. We look ahead at the year before us with hope and anticipate your continuing love and fulfillment of your promises. In this new year, grant that we may become more faithful, more committed to your kingdom work, more knowledgeable of your ways, more familiar with your spirit, more pliant to your instruction, more willing to give of ourselves to others, we pray for increase of love, of storehouses full of good things to share, of relational harmony and peace, of health, of meaningful work. And for balance among work and play and rest, of personal growth and wisdom, of grateful hearts, and most of all, we pray for increase of your presence and your power among us. May we hear your voice more clearly. May we heed it. May we be aware of the limits of our understanding and work to expand them. May the words of Christ dwell in us richly. May we be vigilant for those around us who are in need and tend to them. May we experience anew at the rebirth and the resurrection of the life of Jesus. May we complete the task, God, that you set before us. Love well those souls you give to our care and make good use of the time we are given on this earth. For this, we are grateful. We're grateful for your love. We're grateful for your kindness and we're grateful for your care. Amen. Amen. We thank God for you. We thank God, Minister Johnson, for you, for all the ministers, all the support. Um, Reverend Stewart, who was with us in the sanctuary, Minister Johnson, First Lady, for all my brothers and sisters in Christ. We thank God for this day and for this time of gathering. We now will share uh, this morning uh, a song uh, from the Progressive Baptist Church. You know, uh, one of our challenges uh, in this season as we have not uh, been able to uh, gather during the Christmas season or during the uh, New Year's season. And so we miss all the images and imagery. What I've, we've done together is put here uh, a show of some of our Christmas and New Year's journey uh, from December 3rd, 2012, from the beginning of the journey, even up to last year, 2019, when we were still in the sanctuary. Enjoy uh, this moment here. Amen, amen, and amen.
Amen. Amen. Again. Amen. 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 Turn your volume up a little bit, Ref. Amen. Amen. We are thankful and blessed this morning to be joined. Stewart. It's a blessing to hear him and the soothing sounds of him on the keyboard as we prepare to pray this morning. So many prayer concerns on the hearts of the people. So many prayer concerns on the hearts of the nation. So many prayer concerns on the heart of our community, Milwaukee, Wisconsin challenges everywhere. Even here in Milwaukee where we have record homicide, where we are killing one another. Milwaukee concluded this year with 189 homicides. As of New Year's Day, nearly doubling the number from 2019. And as it said in the article, smashing its previous record set in 1991 by more than 14%. We find ourselves in a world that is full of strife and challenge. We find ourselves in a world that is full of chaos and in need of peace, prayer, and power. We find ourselves in a place where we need our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> thankful, Lord, right now that you are touching us, that you are with us as we look to you in prayer. Lord, we come before you this morning as humbly as we know how, lifting our hands, lifting our spirits, lifting our voices, lifting our concerns, our challenges, our hurts, our sorrow, our frustration, Lord, our disappointments, our prayer for healing, God, our prayer for those who are grieving in this season. Some have lost loved ones due to the tragedy of the coronavirus. We began this journey as part of the Progressive Baptist Church, losing one of our own brother, Robert Johnson, late husband and sister, Anita Johnson, nephew, to the shortest, to coronavirus, a young man in his 50s struck down too early, Lord. A plague is on the land, God, and we have not addressed it well. People were going to die, Lord, but now more have died as a result of incompetence, neglect, and a failure to appreciate love from one man for another. This is why we need your love, God, so we can be not only reminded, but be committed to love God with all our might, all our love, all our heart, and all our soul, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. If we would find a way in this place, in this city, in this nation to do those two simple things, God, how much further along the journey we would be. Lord, I was watching and I saw how advanced technology is. They have robots that look and move like humans. Tremendous advance in technology, but we have not advanced enough that we don't have those with no food. We haven't advanced enough, Lord, that we have those with no clothing and no shelter. Where are our priorities, God? Are our priorities with you? Or are we serving other gods? Be present with us, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you would touch those now who are struggling in this season, the holiday season, Lord. We know it's joyous for some, and we know it's a depth of sorrow for others. We pray that you would touch each heart each mind, each soul, right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Touch all who are grieving on this day. I lift up my own family and uh, my mother-in-law, my other mother, Texas Buffkin, the whole family in the passing, her brother, Uncle Kent, Kent Dyes, who died on New Year's Day, Lord, a friend to many out of Flint, Michigan. I pray that you touch the entire family now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We know there are those who lost parents in this season. We pray that you would touch them in the name of Jesus Christ. 
We pray that you would touch this nation, Lord, where bitterness, uh, division, uh, hatred, sedition are all rising and belching up in the land, Lord, in troubling, troubling ways. I would say frightening, Lord, but I know that you are my light and salvation. So whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of our lives. So whom should we be afraid? So we are not frightened, Lord, but we are profoundly concerned, God, and we pray that you would come by here, Lord. We pray, Lord, that somehow, some way that we would study war no more, but unfortunately it seems like man is marching to the beat of a different drummer. The war machine and the greed machine and the uh, lust machine are ruling, uh, fighting certainly, competing in the land, Lord, and we need you to come by here. Touch all who are in need of a healing this morning, Lord. So many are not hospital beds, Lord. I want to lift up our two elder ministers, uh, Reverend Virginia Sykes, Reverend Martin Woodard, Lord, that you will be present with them and with their families as they struggle for healing right now. I lift up my father, Bob, who is having some physical challenges. Be with him right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray in this season of pandemic that you would touch families, that you would create space for reconciliation, God. We know that from the beginning, Cain, Abel, early on along the journey, we talk about homicide, we talk about fratricide, we talk about the spirit of Herod that is a systemic spirit that seeks to destroy, but that spirit of Cain, God, runs rampant in far too many cities and far too many families where brother has ought against brother and seeks to destroy, Lord. We pray right now, and sister against sister, parent against child, child against parent, Lord, come by here, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus and touch us our families, Lord. Touch our city. Uh, touch the homes where there is rampant domestic violence, God. Come by here, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray, God. We need your presence and your power, God. You say all through the word from Genesis to Revelation, we see and hear about your power, God. Well, Lord, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would show up and touch, God, right now in your power and in your strength and in your peace and in your joy and in your rest in the land, Lord, for we all need so much of that right now, Lord. A new day, a new time, a new year, a new season. Lord, help us to have our light shine brightly, Lord, that we can be a blessing to others and glorify your holy name. I pray for myself now as I prepare to preach. After our scripture and the song, we lift this up to you now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And for your sake, Lord, and we pray in confidence, not wavering, not doubting. Not double-minded, for a double-minded man you said in the book of James is unstable in all his ways. No double-mindedness here, Lord. We are focused on the Prince of Peace, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Waymaker, Earth Shaker, making people stand up and take notice. Do as you will, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen and amen. 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 We thank God. Amen. Amen. We thank God for you. Uh, we thank God for being God. We thank God for his presence. We now have a reading of the scripture this morning. Amen. Our scripture is found in the book of Matthew 2, verses 1 through 8. I'm actually going to read all of it. I'm going to read uh, Matthew 2. I'm going to read uh, verses 1 through 12. I'm going to tell you already our subject because I wanted to get embedded deeply in our spirits, Reverend, uh, which is uh, new worship, uh, new wisdom, new worship, new wisdom, new wickedness. All these things arise during the course of this journey, and we see it right here in this text. New worship, new wisdom, and a new wickedness in the land. They all come together during the Christian journey. Don't let anybody tell you uh, that it's all peaches and cream and walking through a rose garden. The Christian journey is rough and rugged. Am I right, Reverend? Right. It's tough. It's a challenge. It's, it's not easy. It's not for the faint of heart. Our faith was bought on a rugged cross. Don't let anybody whisper in your ear about the light faith of Christianity. It is a rugged, gritty faith. And we see it right here from the beginning. Let me slow down, though, before I leap into my sermon already. Matthew chapter 2, beginning at verse 1, reading all the way through verse 12. 
It's entitled in your Bible, it probably says, The Magi or the Wise Men Visit the Messiah. I'm reading from the New International Version. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard that this, he was disturbed and all of Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly. You know, I always tell you, I'll beware of those secret meetings. And found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I may too go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. Verse 10, when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down, and they worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with the gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Thus ends the reading of the word. Thanks be to God for the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. After Reverend plays a sermonic hymn for us, we will preach from the subject, new worship, new wisdom, new wickedness. Father God, we thank and praise you again for this day, and we pray one more time just to get it all right, Lord, for me to decrease, for you to increase, to stand up in me, to preach a word to your waiting people this morning, for we wait and we are in need of a word from thee. 
Lord, we need a word from you each and every day. And as we have entered into 2021, Lord, give us a new word for a new day, for a new time and a new season. Lord, be with us and bless us with a word this morning. We lift this prayer to you now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And for his sake, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, all right, let's get this sermon started. We are uh, in a place now where we have entered into a new year. We are in 2021. Praise be to God again for making it out of 2020. Uh, nobody can take that for granted. Uh, nobody could have accounted for what 2020 would bring. And I do want to say before we ease into this sermon that uh, nobody can account for what 2021 may bring. We think we might know, we think we might have some good idea, we think we might have it all uh, figured it out, but while we're trying to work it out, Jesus, or while we're trying to figure it out, Jesus has already worked it out. A whole bunch of prophetic words went forth that were off target relative to what would happen in 2020. And so the best way to be grounded on what is and what is not is to be deeply rooted in this word of God, my brothers and sisters in Christ, deeply rooted in this word. And on this first Sunday in 2021, in the Sunday of newness, uh, where we've come through the season of Advent, this is uh, sometimes referred to as a second Sunday of Christmas uh, on the Christian liturgical calendar, uh, we want to talk about some new things. I want to talk about uh, some new worship, and I want to talk about some new wisdom. <clears throat> and I want to talk about some new wickedness, because they all arise. There was a, a, a cliche that seemed like I heard it back in like the mid, maybe late 90s. People used to say, uh, another level and a, another devil. And it was a catchy and it was good and it sounded right. But I do want to remind all of us that whether it's the Christmas season, the resurrection season, the Easter season, the New Year season, uh, that the devil, uh, evil is on its job 24-7, 365, roaming the earth, seeking whom it may devour. We do not look at that in the spirit of fear, because we don't operate from a spirit of fear, but we surely do look at it from a spirit of wisdom, from a spirit of wisdom, uh, because we want to be alert and aware as to what the Lord has in store for us. And here we are uh, in this moment, this time in the Bible, where there is a new portion of the journey. We have celebrated uh, Advent, we have celebrated the birth of Christ, and now we have come to a time of newness. Uh, there's some newness happening. It's a new year, y'all. It's a newer season for us. Uh, and we don't want to go backwards. There's a song we say, uh, uh, I won't go back. And we don't want to go backwards to where we've come from before. We've learned some things prayerfully during this season uh, of pandemic, if we have been attentive, if we've been paying attention, if we've been in our word, if we've been focusing on worshiping our Lord and Savior, then we've learned some things along this Christian journey uh, because we've been embedded deeply in the word of God. And so don't go backwards to the old ways, but spring forward into the newness of the year and into the newness of your faith. And as we look here, we have transitioned. In the Bible, we are in a new phase, a new moment along the journey. Christ has been born. And here we are, there's a new moment in time. The Magi, the wise men, Reverend, have come to visit, come to find out, rather, about Jesus. They've come to worship him. It's, it's a new worship for them. They didn't know about him beforehand. They, 
expected that he was going to be here, but there is a time and a season and, and a new way of worship. And I want us to think about this as we go into 2021, this idea of how am I going to worship in a new way? How am I going to worship with greater spirit? How am I going to worship in greater truth? How am I going to worship new in 2021? Same God, but new worship, more vibrant, more abundant, more rich, more full in the worship. But also part of that is having some new wisdom. How am I going to be more attentive to what God is saying? Stop looking at the things of the world and the things of man, but focus on what the Lord is saying. That's You couldn't be more wise than that. The fear and reverence of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear, the reverence of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So if you want to get some new wisdom, plug into what God is saying. And we're going to see here that these, they have some new wisdom they got along the journey. And the last but not least, but surely important, is this new wickedness. Because there's a wickedness, y'all, uh, that gets worse and worse and worse along life's journey. Y'all know I'm right. Uh, the world seems like it gets more and more wicked each and every day, doesn't it, Reverend? As a matter of fact, it says over at, at 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 7, and then we're going to jump into this text. Uh, it says this over in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 7 about wickedness. And we're going to see this Herod spirit is a new wickedness, but it's also like an old wickedness that I talked about with Cain and the one who went after his brother, uh, Abel. But here it says in, in 2 Timothy 3, uh, but mark this, that in the last days perilous times shall come. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, uh, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. I'm going to say that again. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, have, they have nothing to do with such people. They are the kind who worm their way into the homes and gain control over gullible women who are loaded down with sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires, always learning, but never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. I'm talking about that type of wickedness, y'all. And surely, if we are watching the news, CNN, Fox, MSNBC, listening to the radio, watching the White House, watching Congress, uh, watching state houses, uh, watching neighborhoods, uh, watching stuff going on, we know that wickedness is at a high, high place and a high, high time. We've got to be ready with some new worship and some new wisdom to be prepared for this new wickedness. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. I could preach just from that sentence because almost everything we need is in sentence number one. Uh, there's wisdom in that sentence. There's wickedness. We don't know it yet, uh, yet in that sentence. And there's new worship in that sentence. New worship, new wisdom, new wickedness. Let's talk about the worship first because that's the good news. <clears throat> Coming to worship the Lord in a new way. These magi, these wise men, wanted to worship God. They were enthusiastic about worshiping God, worshiping God. As a matter of fact, they anticipated worshiping God and they saw this star. This was the wisdom. They saw a sign from God that pointed them in the right direction. And when they saw that sign, they were wise and said, we're going to do what that sign said do. I got a word from the Lord. I got a word from the preacher. I got a word in my time of prayer. And so I'm going to be wise when I get a word from the Lord and I'm going to respond to that word from the Lord. And that's exactly what they did. They said, where is he? Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews. We saw his star. It means they knew a little bit of something, something. They had been paying attention. They had been anticipating, and we have come to worship him. Wisdom in the text. New worship in the text. They anticipated the uh, Lord. They had never before have they worshiped the Savior. Never before have they seen this star, but they have come to worship him. And what about the new wickedness? Well, here it is. The time after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, uh, during the time of King Herod, 
We don't know it yet, but when we get two or three verses down, we're going to find about the wickedness of this King Herod. The time is set in the narrative. It's during the time known as King Herod. Uh, we can chronicle the moment in the same way we can chronicle this moment in global history. Hold on a minute. Amen. All right. <clears throat> As the same way we can chronicle this moment in time. Uh, don't let anyone tell you that the Bible doesn't concern itself with the times. It does. It sets this narrative in a particular place, in a particular time, in a particular moment. This particular moment is the time of King Herod, an evil king, a king threatened by power, uh, a king that was a murderer, who was seditious, who was a narcissist, uh, who was a troublemaker, who was concerned about his power, who did not seem to be a lover of the people, but in love with himself and his own power. In the same way, we are going to chronicle 10 and 20 and 30, 50 years from now, and this is going to be the moment in the age of Trump. Uh, 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 globally, it's, this is the age of King Herod. And we see uh, that here's a problem right away. <coughs> In verse 2, when King Herod heard this, he was disturbed in all of Jerusalem with him. Herod was disturbed by the coming of the king. Herod was disturbed by the coming of Jesus Christ. Look at how he was described. He was described as the one who has been born king of the Jews. This was somebody coming. The kingdom was coming, and Herod uh, was aware of this coming kingdom and was concerned about this kingdom. He was worried about this kingdom. He was deeply disturbed. This Jesus, this one born king of the Jews, was threatening and a threat to King Herod, to the power structure, even to all of Jerusalem. Now, look, y'all, he was just a baby. He was just a baby born in a manger, right? He was just a kid born in a manger, but he was a threat to power. When light comes in the presence of darkness, it is a threat to darkness. You know, over in the Gospel of the John, it says that uh, darkness hates the light. And so do know, my brothers and sisters in Christ, that when you let your light shine, that somewhere, someplace, darkness is going to be upset with you. Darkness is going to break out around you. Darkness is going to be concerned about what you can do for the people. Be aware of this. This is the reality of life. This is the reality of the journey. It's just a baby born in a manger. No room at the end, but still evoking fear and trembling in those in the halls and the seats of power. Herod was evil. He, what did he do? He called together the best of the best. He called together the most experienced minds uh, to exploit their knowledge for evil. I'm thinking of Dr. Fauci right now. I'm thinking of how evil can call in some people with knowledge and wisdom and pretend like it's going to be all right, but they're really running the game. In my notes, I actually called it uh, the pimpish spirit, the pimpish spirit of somebody like a King Herod. A Herod type lies, pimps, exploits, colludes, kills, hold secret meetings. They do all of those things in their own name to seek to destroy the good and the righteousness of the Lord, to seek to destroy light. That's what you see here uh, in this text. It says, where he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. Uh, and then he read, they read, of course, for him, from Micah chapter 2, but you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathath, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. That's the prophetic word from Micah chapter 2 that was read to King Herod when he said, hey, where is this king? Where is this Messiah to be born? So there was awareness, even evil was expecting good, even wickedness was looking for the light to come. Now here you see it uh, in the next verse. Herod called a secret meeting, y'all. Secret meetings usually mean a problem. He is the king with all the power. Really no need for him to call a secret meeting. Nothing for him to hear, but he called fear, but he called a secret meeting and he lied. Says Herod called the Magi secretly, found out from the exact time the star had appeared, uh, and he had sent them to Bethlehem. He said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. Look at this brother here, Reverend. Look at this dirty dog trying to pimp the powers of the people. 
the Magi. They had wisdom. They had insight. They had knowledge. They were trying to operate in a righteous way, and now Carrot, with that wickedness, sought to call them in to make them complicit in his dirt. Chief priests, teachers, Magi, preachers, uh, uh, Christians, come on in. I got a little something I want to talk to you about. Come on over here to the side. I got a little secret meeting I want to have. No, it's all good. I really want it. It's all to the benefit and the glory of God, but we got to go over here and talk about it in hushed tones. We got to go in the basement and whisper a little bit. Let me pull you to the side away from the people. You got to be aware of those secret meetings, y'all. That's that pimpish spirit. We've got gifts and talents and abilities, and that new wickedness will attempt to pimp and exploit your power, your knowledge, our gifts that have been given to us in the name of the Lord. That's exactly what they tried to do here. He really was engaged in a conspiracy. Called the men secretly, found out the exact time. He said, go and search him out, and then come back and tell me because I want to worship him. He is serving the father of lies. A liar serving the father of lies. It says in the Bible, when you lie, you speak your native language and your, uh, your native tongue. It's a big lie. He tries to align his evil ways with their righteous ways. They want to go to worship. They want to go worship the king of kings and lord of lords. They want to go lift up the savior. They're excited. They've got gifts uh, for the king. They want to worship in a new way. This king that we've been waiting for, this new babe that's coming, but he wants to align his evil ways with their righteous ways. He wants to align their evil ways with his righteous ways. Do know, brothers and sisters in Christ, that there are those who seek to align their evil with your good. Do know, my brothers and sisters in Christ, that there are those who seek to align their evil with your gifts. They want to tag along. They want to walk alongside. They want to claim your name. They want to claim your power. They see how your light shines and they want a little bit of that shine for themselves. And if they can't get it for themselves, they want to tear it down. They want to make you destroy your testimony because that's how that wickedness is. It lies, it pimps, it exploits, it colludes, it kills, it has secret meanings. It seeks to align its evil ways with their righteous ways. He's trying to play them by coming up to them. He is a liar and later we'll see that he is also a murderer. When they had gone on the angel of the Lord. <clears throat> oh, I'm in the hole. <laughs> Wrong book. Um, after they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. So again, they're following along. They're worshiping God. They're looking for guidance and direction of God. This is the way they were already wise. They could have figured some stuff out. They could have analyzed stuff, but they were wise in following God. They look for the star of God. They look for the direction of God. This is that new wisdom. They followed the star and they followed the prophecy. Following God, this is the wisdom that they displayed. Uh, to do what they were supposed to do. After they had heard the king, <coughs> they went on their way. The star um, and the star they had seen when it rose went on ahead of them <coughs> until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. This is worship, y'all. They're overjoyed by the presence of God, by the revelation of God, by the experience of God, by the word of God, by the praise of God by the prayers of God, people, by the wonders of God's glory. Seek, this is new worship, to be overjoyed in the presence of God. When God moves in your life, when God moves for you, when he shows you a new way, when he shows you more excellent way, when he heals, uh, uh, when he reconciles, when he draws you into his presence, be like these brothers were here. They were overjoyed by the presence of God. They were excited. They saw the star. They saw the presence. They saw the manifestation of the promise and the prophecy and they were filled with joy. They weren't even there yet. They're still anticipating uh, the God. They're still excited about God. They saw something that made them seek him. They knew something that made it real, and they had a new joy. <clears throat> On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. This is their new worship. This is the beginning 
of worshiping Christ. In 2021, y'all, let's look for some new worship, some new ways, some new intentionality, intentionality, some new focus, some focus on your word, focus on your prayer, focus on your preaching if you're a preacher, focus on your teaching if you're a teacher, spend some time with nature, spend some time in meditation, spend some time walking in your backyard, spend some time in righteous fellowship, uh, spend some time lifting up holy hands, spend some time in your prayer closet, uh, some new worship in 21 so you can get fresh word, fresh, fresh revelation for a fresh season. This was new for them. They bowed down and worshiped the Lord. They anticipated it. They followed it. They were wise. They listened to the Lord, and they were blessed to worship him. And then they had the gifts, their treasures, and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Not man, not woman, not pastor, not first lady. Worship the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Bring your gifts unto him. Am I talking about money and tithes? I'm talking really about your gifts. They brought their gifts. You have spiritual gifts, preachers, teachers, healers, givers, servers, helpers, administrators, leaders, tongues, faith, all these gifts that we have in the body of Christ. Bring your gifts as an act of worship to the Lord. Stop taking your light and hiding it. Salt is no good if it stays in the salt shaker. Light is no good if it remains hidden. Jesus has said we are the salt and the light, and we are in a new season of new worship, and we are in a new season of new wisdom, and for sure we're in a season of new wickedness. These foolish folks in D.C. are talking about rebellion. One of them talked about uh, uh, executing Mike Pence, they are off the wall and have lost their minds. But locally, we are in the same place. Brothers killing brothers, sisters killing sisters. The wickedness is on an all-time high. And we've got to be like these wise men. Uh, we've got to be wise men and wise women. We've got to bring our gifts in a new way before the risen Savior. 2021, we celebrated the rising of the king, the birth of the king. Now let us be like these magi and bring these gifts. Let us be like the magi and be wise. They even heard from the Lord <clears throat> and having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. They did not join in with evil. The Lord gave them a word and said, that's not good for you. This is not the way to go. This is some bad stuff. Leave that mess alone. In 2021, y'all, let us have some new worship. Let us have some new wisdom. Let us be aware of the new wickedness that seeks to kill and steal and destroy and to stop you and to stop me from bringing my gifts before the master, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our gifts will make a difference. Our gifts will make a way. Our gifts will be a blessing to somebody else. Our gift will grow the body of Christ. Our gift can be utilized to liberate somebody else who's in bondage and baggage. It might be the gift of song. It might be the gift of music. It might be the gift of preaching and teaching. But as we look about across the earth and we see all this chaos, and all this confusion, my brothers and sisters in Christ, as we enter into 2021, I implore you, I exhort you, I plead with you according to the word of God, that you situate yourself in a place of new worship, new anticipation of what God will do, a new way of worshiping that you've never done before, seeing something and then wanting to see God, going back into the word <coughs> and doing what God said do a new joy, and then new wisdom. Follow what God says do. <clears throat> Follow what the word says. Follow what the preacher says. Follow what the teacher says. Do what God says do, and then be alert to the wickedness that's in the land that's seeking to kill, steal, and destroy. But the Bible has said that upon this rock, I built my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So no matter how we feel and how rough it is and how down we might be in the moment, do know that the Lord is going to be victorious in and through his church in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I lift these prayers to all of you now in the name of Jesus and for his sake. And I say amen, amen, and amen. New worship, new wisdom. <clears throat>
Watch out for that new wickedness. Dear Lord, we come before you <coughs> this morning praying that you would strengthen our worship, Lord. I know it's a strange time and it's a strange season in the land, Lord. We are uh, in some perilous times and some weird ways, uh, but Lord, you know all about us. And we have been in situations like this and worse before, worse before and you still have manifest in powerful ways. In fact, in times of persecution, God, that's when you show up and show out. So I pray right now in this body of Christ during the year 2021 that we will begin to gather our minds and our spirits and get focused on building, uh, equipping God's people, building God's church and advancing your kingdom, Lord. We can advance it now. We can see the Bible 24-7. 365 now because of social media, Lord. Help us to be bold in our witness inside our homes, uh, inside our families, Lord. Bless us and be with us. I lift this prayer now in Christ's name for his sake. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. We thank God for you uh, who have joined us. We now uh, extend on behalf of Christ uh, an opportunity for those who are interested in becoming part of the kingdom. Uh, if you are looking for a church family, if you are looking for information on how to uh, become a member of the Progressive Baptist family, even more importantly, perhaps you have some questions about the Bible, about your faith walk, about your faith journey, we would love for you to contact us directly and we can respond to you and work with you and bring you along. You can reach us. I'm available, uh, easy to reach on social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, even Instagram. You can find us on all of those media. Those are all the ways you can find us. You can also contact me at Pastor Lanier at gmail.com, Pastor Lanier at gmail.com, also 414-690-2520, 414-690-2520 is how you can uh, send me a text. If you have questions about anything you've heard today about becoming a member of the Progressive Baptist Church or more what it means to be a disciple of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Please reach out because we are here for you. Amen, amen, and amen. I also want to lift up a moment <clears throat> of giving. Uh, we are thankful that we have continued to be blessed uh, with a church that has been faithful. I praise God for you, progressive. We've been faithful over tithes and offerings and giving, uh, never in any position of begging or twisting arms because the Bible continues to tell us that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And so if you want to give to the Progressive Baptist Church, uh, you can go to our website, <clears throat> progressivebaptistmilwaukee.org, or you can go to, an, if you want to download an app, there's an app called Easy Tithe. And if you download that app, Easy Tithe, you can provide and give to Progressive that way. Uh, or go again to our website uh, and press the donate button uh, and then that will uh, be another way that you can give. And then last but not least, certainly you can either mail a check or bring a check to 8324 West Keith, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53222. Amen. Amen. Given it will be given unto you a good measure pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap. For the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Luke 6 and 38. Amen. Amen. And amen again. <clears throat> amen, amen. Uh, we will uh, now go to our time of uh, communion. Uh, our time of communion. At home, I pray that you have gathered. I, my hope next month is that we will be available to provide communion supplies to the congregation. That is our goal uh, for the next month as we continue to face this pandemic. So take a moment and gather your bread and cup. <clears throat> as we prepare to honor the Lord and to do this in memory of him. Amen. I will now read our communion litany. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 29. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 29 says, For I received of the Lord 
that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, <clears throat> you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. I also want to remind us as we prepare to pray over the elements of bread and cup, that the scripture also admonishes us that if any one of us has any ought against his brother or sister, meaning you got an issue in your heart against your brother or sister, you need to reconcile that before you take communion to get that up out of your spirit. This is a season now and an opportunity uh, where we um, are in this crisis to really reconnect and to create space for reconciliation in families and homes and friendships. Lord, we come again this morning. We are praying over these elements of bread and cup. We are <clears throat> reminded uh, that it's your last time of gathering with your disciples who you had come to call friends that you reminded them again that you were going to Calvary's cross. They did not want to accept it in the same we all, way we don't often want to accept it. Uh, but you told them again and again and that you asked them to do this in memory of you, a reminder of the cost of our salvation, free to us, but at powerful cost. Your very life on Calvary's cross, on a hill called Golgotha, pierced in your side, blood shed, flesh torn from your body, Lord, uh, on Calvary. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We honor the cost and the price of our salvation. We take this moment reverently, seriously. Join our brothers and sisters in Christ all over the globe who are now doing as you ask, God, to do this in remembrance of you. <clears throat> Lord, we pray a blessing upon these elements symbolic of bread and cup, symbolic of your blood shed on Calvary's cross, and symbolic of your broken body. Lord, we lift these to you now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and for his sake, and we say together, <clears throat> amen. Amen. I'm going to ask Reverend to play us a little bit of something as we prepare. Amen. This is the bread, symbolic of Christ, broken and battered his body, broken for you and me. Let us eat of the bread together. Let every heart say, Amen. symbolic of Christ's blood shed on Calvary's cross shed for you for me for atonement for payment <clears throat> of our sins let us drink of the cup together drink ye all of it
Let every heart say amen again. Amen. We thank you for this blessed time of worship and fellowship for joining us at the Progressive Baptist Church as we have lifted up our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we have come together to fellowship in this 21st century, this 21st year. I pray that the Lord meets you at places of new worship. I pray that the Lord meets you at places of new wisdom. And I pray that he keeps all of us alert to the new wickedness that is in the land that will seek to steal our joy and to tear down and to exploit our gifts. But Jesus arose with all power in his hand and we are thankful and grateful and our name is victory. <clears throat> now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with the hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Grace and peace unto you as you go into this day. And we all said together, amen, amen, amen. and amen. <clears throat>